Yo, why is he looking at me like that? What's up, little bud? You got a staring problem, pal? Like what, dude? He's just looking at you. He's a baby. He's just Look at his at face. You. Dumb little face. Stop. Yo, Zan, get your boy, dog. All right. Let's get into it. Recently, I've been taking a look into the Dark Souls games, and I've really enjoyed putting out these little review things. And for the most part, you guys seem to agree with me, and that's great. I don't have time for people to disagree with me. This isn't an open discussion. It's a YouTuber essay. You have to agree with me. Anyway, but after doing these reviews, I came across something which I didn't even know was a thing. There's quite a few people out there that really don't like Dark Souls 3. And I honestly didn't know this. I really thought Dark Souls 3 was regarded as a solid entry into the series. So when I found out about this, I looked Stupid. into it and why people don't like it. And you know what? There's something to be said about it, really. And I just want to talk about it. So let's start the video. What, do you think it's going to be more intro? This isn't your grandma's YouTube channel. It's my YouTube channel. I can start the video whenever I fucking want. All right, so I want to start on a really strong positive for me before we can get to the controversials, and that is the bosses. When people nice. ask me, in short, how would I describe Dark Souls 3, I like hey, to call it legit. like it's the best of arcade mode of souls. I mean, you can just look at some of the lineups. The big picture right now, the second half of the game, you've got like Pontiff, Aldrich, Yorm, Dancer, Dragon Slayer, Twin Princes, True Gundia, Nameless King, Solar Cinder, I mean, it's just absolutely banging boss. Back to back to back. It's an absolute treat, it, re it really is. And yeah, other Souls games have great bosses, and maybe some of your favourite bosses are in those games. But I just think that the quality of bosses here, consistently, back to back, that it makes it the overall best bossing experience as a complete package. Also, by result, maybe the best overall PvE experience too. Because, well, let's be real, when people talk about their favourite Souls PvE experiences, it's never like, oh wow, I really enjoyed grinding through the Undead Bird for two hours. It's always, oh my god, I finally beat Sworn Ornstein. That, that was great. However, this isn't to say that three's bosses are perfect. I, I think there's one big problem here. I think there's just too many gimmick boss fights here, you know? You know, like Yorm is a gimmick with the Storm Ruler. You've got Walnia with the bracelets, and you've got Curse Tree. Deacons, to an extent, is a gimmick. I think Ancient Wyvern. You know, there's just like one too many gimmick fights. That, I mean, that's five out of the 19 in the base game bosses. Quarter of them are just little gimmicks. Now, I'm not saying they are bad bosses. I think Yorm is a gimmick fight, and I think that's still pretty well done. But yeah, maybe just a bit too much. Overall, though, I would say it is the best boss package, and maybe by proxy, the best PB experience. But now we get into the controversials, because to fight these bosses, you will need... Now this is the big one. It's a, it's a huge point of contention for a lot of people. And I don't think anyone watching can deny that Dark Souls 3's combat is quite simplified. You look at Dark Souls 1 and you've got you know, the power attacks actually kind of have a place there because of the noticeable damage increase. You've got Dark Souls 2 and well everything's just fucking slow there. But, but I suppose you've got the whole Chungus Reddit moment of power stance to ultra great swords for people who just want to grill for God's sake. But then you got Dark Souls 3 and what do we got? We've got our ones and we've got a lot of them. Any person who's spent some time in this game will tell you that just spamming the light attack for your attacking option is the way to go. And this isn't just a mechanical preference or anything, it's just plainly better. Take, take this for example, okay, so we're gonna try and open with a jumping attack and like maybe try and follow up with a heavy attack and we get hit, but whatever. And then you've got the Chad R1 spam, which is even better damage because of the more frequent hit. Plus, you don't have any commitment to any of the attack animations and such. They're light attacks, you can get them straight out. And on top of the R1 spam, you've got another spammy, overpowered move the roll. I've talked about the whole block versus roll thing, go back to my Dark Souls 2 review and the adaptability thing if you want to see that, but the roll is an amazing defensive choice and here they've made it super spammable, super safe, so many invincibility frames and there's very little drawback. So when it comes down to it, players are obviously going to choose the path of least resistance and choose the most comfortable options. So a lot of players will eventually just fall into spamming R1s and rolls to get through the game. This is... Yeah, maybe not the most interesting and diverse combat. However, and this is a big however, I'd like to uh, put my idea ahead and what I think about it. And you know what, I, I think it's a very fair response. And you gotta hear me out here. You know, let's take a really good boss, for example, like Pontiff, for example, right? Maybe in the other games, you've got all these extra options for approach and, and that's really cool. But then you got this with the R1 spams and the roll. But I think there's something to be said about stripping all that back, you know, and it's simplifying it, taking it right down to it. So there's just one button for attack, and you've got your one button for the dodge, and that's it. 
you just lock it down nice and tight. Yeah, even with the combat being basic like this, Pontiff is still a really intense fight. The simplicity of that makes the fight snappy, fast paced, back and forth. You know, I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that would it be nice to have more options and such? Y yeah, of course, that's always nice. But the lack of them doesn't inherently make it bad. I think the bosses play really well if the spammy rolls and such, there's a lot of enemies with hyper aggression. I mean, sometimes the hyper aggression does seem a bit relentless, does seem a bit like iffy, but you can kind of feel how maybe, yeah, it's spammy, but it was balanced around it in a certain weird way. And yeah, I suppose there is other options like weapon arts, for example, but then again, you do a weapon art like this and you see that damage and it's like, what's the fucking point? I can just spam our ones for more damage, less commitment and less stamina. It, it, why wouldn't you? So you've got this combat, but it kind of doesn't matter because it's all conveyed through your build. You might not be able to spam our wands and rolls because you're using a great sword and like heavy armor. The thing is though, like the combat, the builds are heavily weighed to one side. Just simple, good old melee. Here's an example, which I'm sure quite a few of you can relate to. I find this spell early on, like, oh, okay, this looks really cool. Or maybe I'll try and like lean my build into this. So you invest levels into this, which is quite a lot early on. I mean, this could have been quite important other level ups, but it doesn't matter because you got this cool spell now. And finally, after all that, you get this. And what's the fucking point? Just get the sword. Press R1, jobs are good. And yeah, I, I do agree with this criticism. I also think that melee combat is the way to go because I think you miss out on a lot of cool combat interactions by playing at a distance. But magic is often relegated to just making melee better. And that's a shame. You might notice that I forgave the combat and its lack of diversity and said, well, it isn't that bad. And then I said the lack of diversity in the builds was a bad thing. And I think the differences between the two, I, I, I don't know. It's honestly just the way I feel, really. There's no good reason. But you know what I love? Uh, uh, sponsored content. Sponsor Renode by NordVPN. Oh, wow, look at me spamming rolls. I love this. But there's two things I can't roll away from my feelings and internet viruses. Which is why I installed NordVPN VPN to my guy on Dark Souls 3. I don't know how that works. There's no computers in medieval times. It didn't work. But if I did have a computer in this game, I would be sure that NordVPN would provide me with the most top notch internet security and privacy. Oh, NordVPN, please look at my browsing history. I have saved a funny meme in there just for you. Oh, well chosen dead senpai. You know, not even I. NordVPN VPN would track, collect, or share your private data. It's none of my business. Well, it is your business now, bucko, because we're going to be a family. Oh, wow, really? Well, I don't know that because all the data is saved behind a wall of next generation encryption. Okay, that's it. I'm sick of your amazing awareness of online security. I'm taking the kids and I'm leaving. Oh no, she's left us again and I'll never see them because I can't track their IP. My life is now a joke and it's all thanks to NordVPN.com forward slash zero end. So take control of your internet experience today with NordVPN and right now you can get a two year plan at a huge discount plus you get a little extra month for free. So that is NordVPN.com forward slash Zero Lenny, you do see my ex-wife out there. Tell her I miss the kids. You know what? Before I start blabbing on again, I think the best way I can demonstrate this point is some on-screen drawings. I'm not good at drawing. I'll be using paint, so shut it up. I don't want to hear any complaints. Right, so what we're going to be doing? We're going to be drawing some maps. Oh, yeah. They're all going to be from memory, but hey, I'm sure my memory is pretty good at these games. So what I want to do first Start off with Dark Souls 1. So, what we got this here, Phylic Shrine. Oh, look gorgeous, that done it. And then you go, boom, go Undead Berg. Then you got the, the lower, kind of, you know, you got the lower kind of Undead Berg where the Kappa Demon is. But that also links back here. Because you got the little shortcut. And then you're going to start going to the depths. But before you go to the depths, there's another shortcut that goes back here. Oh, wait, I forgot also. In the Undead Berg, you've also got that shortcut going back there. You can see this. All these little connections. That's great. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to keep it short so I can get around to Dark Souls 3. So, okay, Dark Souls 2, we've got Majula. And Majula has got teleportation from the go, which I don't like. But it, it takes it quite interesting, in all honesty, because it goes off in four different ways, you know. It goes off to, like, the Forest of Fallen Giants. Then you've got, like, you know... Brightstone Seldora here, then you've got the Iron Keep up here, and then I suppose down here's the gutter. So it goes off in these four different directions, and then once you get the big four, it then goes quite linear, which is a good thing, you know. Then you've got John Lake Castle, Shrine of Amarna, best fucking place in the whole entire series. Then you've got, you know, Untended Graves, where uh, fucking, what's he called? Vel Stout. Then you've got, you know, it, it goes on, it's quite linear. But here's Dark Souls 3, and this is, oh god, this is where it gets bad. You've got 
you know, Firelink Shrine, and you go straight line, straight way. The only place you can go is High Wall, and then you go Undead Settlement, and then you go Road of Sacrifices, then you go Fire and Keep. But hey, no wait, no, you can go Cathedral, but this is you can't have to do that, and then you go uh, Carthus, and then you go Irithyll. <laughs> And, you know, actually from here, from Irithyll, you can go to Analondo, but also, obviously, you can go to <laughs> Irithyll Dungeon in the Preferring Capital. And, actually, they, 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 I suppose you go to Analondo here, after Irithyll, but then, it teleports you, boom, you do all the big fights, you get teleports you, and you go to Dancer, which, technically, I suppose is right back here. But, it, 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 it fucking doesn't matter. You know, it's a teleport, it may as well just go right here, it may as well just put you right there. There's Dancer. Okay, there's super big high wall. There's the Twin Princes. And there's Solar Cinder. Oh my fucking god. Oh Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? What? This is, I mean, I hate teleportation right from the go. But Dark Souls 2, to its credit, did it quite well. I fucking hate this, by the way. Look at this. It's just slapped on the side of Irithyll. They didn't know what to do with it. So like, oh, fuck it. Slap it on, baby. Just put it right there. Jesus Christ. I hope you enjoyed my maps, by the way. That was that was fucking class, that. I, I better see some comments saying, oh, wow, Lenny. Those, those maps made the whole video. It's just interesting. It didn't even fucking agree with anything until you put the maps on screen. Fucking loved it. Anyway, put it on the map kind of thing. Redemonstrates. That straight line. And yeah, I know you can do dance early and kind of like change the path a little bit. But let, let's be real. That's not it with the world. There's something I really don't like here. And it's kind of the art design. Now I know, I know it's all on purpose to fit the dark fantasy style. But there's just so much grey, monochrome, drab set in here. I know it's the point. But just a lot of it looks like grey mush. And, and when there is a bit of colour, like right here in Irithyll, it's really nice. But again, it's just like a lot of blue mush. You got the dying sun over Lothric Castle. It's a lovely scene, super iconic of Dark Souls 3. But again, otherwise than just a nice skybox, it's a lot of grey mush. Lastly on the world, this is a point which I never really knew about until you guys got back to me. There's a lot of Dark Souls 1 references, and, and I mean a lot. Now, to be fair though, I do like the big reference of Anabondo because I think it's built up quite well. You know, you start off by seeing the knights with the painting of Guinevere, and it's like, oh, that's a pretty sweet East, little Easter egg, you know? And then you move on a bit, and you get to the bit with the archers, and you're like, whoa, okay, they yeah, a nice one bringing that one back, yeah, whatever. But then you get to this room, and it's like, wait, I, hang on, is, is this the same? Is, is the illusion wall still here? And then you finally get to the elevator, and you're like, wait, nah, nah, this, this can't, and boom, and the Londo. I do like that slow ramp up and the slow build up. It really got me good first time around. I do like that one a lot, and I will forgive it, but apart from that, I mean, actually, now that you guys brought my attention to it, yeah. And there is maybe a bit too much Dark Souls 1 references. It's it's like Dark Souls 1. Do you do you remember Dark Souls 1? Dark Souls 1. Do you, wait, do you remember did you play Dark Souls 1? Oh wait, it's it's Dark Souls 2. Hey, but did you remember Dark Souls 1? I mean, I love Dark Souls 1. It's my favourite, and it's great seeing it getting referred to. But once you guys pointed this out to me, I can't really unsee it now. And yeah, it, it can be a bit much. Okay, I don't want to leave this on a downer. I'm just going to throw in a little fucking curveball right here, despite what I've said. I really enjoy playing Dark Souls 3's world. It's funny because it's got my favourite kind of scene of all time in the Dark Souls trilogy. This, like, hollow here, looking at the last dying sun. And he, like, he doesn't even react yet. He's just completely fixated on it. it, it it's a really cool moment for me. And you know what, for the fucking record, a lot of people say, oh, there's too many bonfires, and a lot of people goof on this bit here, like, oh my god, why should just chew bonfires? Oh uh, my god, what the heck? Oh yeah, I don't care. I really don't. You may as well call it one big bonfire. There's no enemies in between, there's no danger here, it may as well just be one big fat bonfire, why not? It only takes five seconds to run across anyway, ah, oh, fuck you. <laughs> You know, for this outro here, I've gone back through the video and I've realised, you know, how much I'm ragging on the game. Which honestly is a huge surprise to me. It really is. I'd usually be putting Dark Souls 3 up near the top of my list of like favourite Souls game rankings and seeing all these criticisms might make me second guess that decision now. I really didn't expect this when I started the video and if anything, I'm quite glad I was opened up to some criticisms and suggestions from you guys. But, but, but... You know, I, I really didn't want to end the video in the same way I did the Dark Souls 2 review. The thing is though, despite all those things, I still absolutely love the game for that. You know, I love all the cool bosses in the game, and that's my main thing. 
And I'm like, well, okay, yeah, the levels are a bit linear, but I really don't mind. I just want to get to the next boss, you know, boom, bam, no messing around. And yeah, I, I know the levels are important, and I absolutely agree that it makes the bosses and overall game more rewarding. But it just doesn't speak to me as much as just wanting to do big cool fights. Before I end, I just want to say, when I closed out my Dark Souls 2 video, I got a bunch of comments saying, oh well no, come on now, it don't say it's just preference, you've got to critically look here, and you've got to analyse what's the best. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you what is the best, enjoying whatever you do in your spare time. If anything, I just feel sad for some people who are purely forming their favourite games and opinions because some like, sweaty YouTuber on the internet like me has said so. I mean, like, come on now. It doesn't have to be a critical science. Despite everything I've said in the video, I love the simple combat. It's snappy. I love the world. It's linear, but fuck it. I don't mind. It's a good boss rush. There's a lot of Dark Souls 1. I fucking love Dark Souls 1. It's great. I didn't even bring up other stuff like PvP, which for a lot of people is their main gripe. And, and the, honestly, I, it doesn't speak to me. So I was like, what's the point in bringing it up? I don't really care. Not at all. It doesn't, doesn't even factor in how I think about the game. And that's what it all comes down to in the end. For me, Dark Souls 3 absolutely shines because of its outstanding qualities in the areas which I care about. Yeah, the PvP sucks. The world and story kind of sucks. I don't care. I still love it.